Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Glorious Life on Wheels. I recently watched a video on a channel called Steve Leto, and he shared how the federal government is possibly monitoring our activities on YouTube. It was pretty frightening. Based on that, I did some more research and discovered how that monitoring could potentially cause you or me to be arrested for crimes we had nothing to do with, simply based on videos we watched and where we may have been when we watched them. If you think this is as frightening as I do, let me know in the comments. If you think I'm overreacting, let me know that in the comments too. But meanwhile, come on and I'm gonna tell you more about what I found out. In the initial video I watched on this matter by Steve Leto, he referenced an article that was written on a digital platform called Mashable by a gentleman named Chase Di Benedetto. I'm going to be looking back and forth on my notes, so excuse me for looking up and down. So I went over and I read that article by Mr. Di Benedetto, and he based his information on an article by Forbes. According to Mr. Di Benedetto, in unsealed court documents, that were reviewed by Forbes, Google was ordered, now listen to this, Google was ordered to hand over names, addresses, telephone numbers, user activity of YouTube accounts and IP addresses. And that included YouTubers that watch certain videos. Now, why these videos were important was according to the unsealed court document, federal investigators were dealing with an individual that I think was a bit trader. And they suspected that this individual was involved in money laundering. So it gets kind of convoluted here, but they reportedly sent over clips from YouTube videos, clips or links to this bit trader. I don't know why, I can't answer that question. But they then wanted to get information, all the aforementioned information on anyone who also watched those YouTube videos between the period of January 1st and January 8th of 2023. Now, according to the feds, this information was gonna be helpful to them in their investigation in the alleged money laundering deal. Now, think about it. Anyone who watched these videos, now these videos, from my understanding, went public, and there were approximately 30,000 people, according to the article, who watched this video. So the feds are asking for names, addresses, telephone numbers, all of this information on 30,000 people? That, I think that's alarming. That means thousands upon thousands of people who in all probability had absolutely nothing to do with any criminal activity are now having to give up, unbeknownst to them, all of this personal information, including what they viewed on YouTube. Because if you get their YouTube activity, it's not gonna just be limited to um, that video. What do you think? Do you think this is as scary as I find it? In doing a deeper dive into this kind of situation, I came across another case that I think it happened in Boston. And it was a situation in, so in which someone called in um, a threat to the police department. They were gonna put a device in some I think it was some trash containers throughout town, or at least in one in town. And you can imagine what kind of device that was. I'm not gonna say it on here because YouTube doesn't like using those words, but they were gonna put a device in a trash container. So police found out that during their investigation, when they were out searching, I'm guessing, for this device, that there was at least one YouTuber, or maybe more, who were actually live streaming their actions. So according to 
the information I read, law enforcement went to court to seek a warrant to get the names of everyone who watched those live streams. Now, clearly, clearly everyone who was watching those live streams, I think one of the channels has 130,000 subscribers, clearly everyone wasn't involved in this act, but yet they're all getting caught up into it and all of their personal information is being provided or requested because they watched live streams. I don't know about you, but this is getting scarier and scarier to me. Then I watched a um, speech by a gentleman by the name of Andrew Kahn. He's the executive director of an organization called STOP, which stands for Surveillance Technology Oversight Project. And he called these kinds of court orders, or really warrants, kind of drag nets, where you drag, haul a net out, and you drag everyone in, whether it's what you really are looking for or not. And he revealed in his talk, I think it was a TED talk, but anyhow, he revealed in his talk that there's something else. You're not going to believe this. It's called a geofence warrant. Basically, it's a warrant forcing companies to hand over location information for not just one, but for everyone in a geographical location. And you're asking, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, if you're on your phone, if you're on your tablet, if you're, I guess, if your Fitbit has some tracking device, anything that can provide information to anyone who's in that location is requested. Now, here's where it becomes problematic. Aside from the fact that I believe it perhaps is a violation of your Fourth Amendment rights to an unreasonable search and seizure, in a Florida case, according to the talk that Mr. Kahn gave, in the Florida case, a man was connected to a crime because he was riding his bicycle in the area that the crime occurred. So somehow he had some device that provided information to some company who then had to turn it over and it showed that he was riding his bicycle. So he is connected to that crime. But this is even scarier. An Arizona man, according to Mr. Kahn, was arrested in a lethal uh, offense. I'm going to call it an unaliving. That's what they call these. You can imagine what I'm talking about. But again, YouTube doesn't like us using certain words. But an unaliving event because someone was accessing his Google account in the close proximity to where this crime occurred. So basically, if I'm walking by somewhere, riding by somewhere, in a church somewhere, because according to Mr. Khan, information was provided even to uh, congregation uh, members in a nearby church in some of these geo-offense warrants, if I'm just riding by and a crime occurs, all of my information can be provided to the government if they seek it because I was in that area. Oh my goodness. Um, here's, you, you, again, you may ask, what is the problem? What's the big deal? Well, let's say that your name gets on this list. We don't know what happens with these lists. We don't know if it becomes a watch list, if you apply for a government job, especially one that needs a, a security clearance, if because your name's on this list, which you don't even know your name is on, you're denied this job and you can't even defend yourself. But let's take it a step further. Hypothetically, now this is not about any candidate, any party, so don't write into me saying anything. I will delete those comments. But let's, let's just say that there's a video that's produced and thousands of people watch it. And it is about a particular candidate, say, who's running for president. 
And in that video, let's say they make some pretty nasty remarks, nasty comments. I mean, really mean-spirited. And they also maybe reveal some information that's damaging. And there are people who watch this video and also people who comment. And maybe they make some nasty comments too. Well, all of that is, you know, public as far as their YouTube, YouTube names. But let's say subsequently there's really a legitimate um, threat against this candidate who then becomes president. So then the government goes and looks for all videos that have said something derogatory about this person. They pull all those videos. They get all the names of all the people who say nasty things about this person. What happens to that list? What happens to the those names. Does the person who's become president have access to those names? Could those people then be the subject of, um, of actions against them? Maybe audits or, you know, I don't know. But I'm just saying it's a slippery slope, I believe, to allow this type of thing to go forth. One last thing that Mr. Cohen revealed there's something called, I'm going to look back to my notes to make sure I get it right, key word searches, a key word search warrant. So if you're a YouTuber and you're trying to come up with titles and you're looking under key word searches to come up with a title to see who's searching these, could you be part of this dragnet where your name is then on a list because you looked up a certain word? Are any of us looking up certain words? Are we now potentially going to have our names on a list? I don't know. I, I just, it, I find it alarming and I think it's really an invasion of privacy. Now, Mr. Khan's organization has been successful in getting, I think it was the geofence warrants outlawed in, I think it was New York, but you'll have to check that out yourself. But let me know in the comments what you think about this and what you think um, is the potential damage to people or harm to us from these kind of uh, searches. One thing Mr. Khan said, he said, you know, we've been focusing a lot of our ten attention on how companies collect our information. And he said, from what I understood, he said, we pretty much are losing that battle. He said, but where we need to be focusing our attention is the potential abuse or misuse of this information by our government against us. But again, I'm not a conspiracist theory type of person, but I just think that some things are frightening. And again, I was in law enforcement for 20 years, so I'm not anti-law enforcement. And I do want people who commit serious crimes held accountable. But I don't want to be put at risk and my freedoms put at risk because I'm looking at certain things on YouTube. Let me know what you think. And if you want more information and more content like this, let me know that in the comments too. Love each and every one of you. May your journeys be filled with joy and blessings and I'll see you next time.